Hey guys, it's Michael and today I'm here to do my March wrap up. Um, I read a lot of books in March. Ever since I started going to the library, I find myself reading more, especially a lot of graphic novels and mangas. I'm gonna split this wrap up into two parts, so it won't be too long, so you can take a break between the middle part because it's going to be a lot of books. I mean, I meant I read a lot of books. So yeah, the theme for some odd reason seemed like this March was I read a lot of books based on hype. So I read a lot of books because it was really hyped and then come to find out a lot of them weren't that great. So yeah, um, and like no shade on anyone that liked the books, but I, yeah, some of these books, it got so much hype and it was so disappointing. What are you gonna do? The first book that I read this month was A, P A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I really enjoyed this book actually. It It's really cool because dispersed within the book is um, a lot of really cool drawings. It's like black and white. It's basically showing um, the monsters and like the settings. Um, it is really cool. Monster's Call is about a boy named Connor who's dealing um, with something that happened to his mom and it's just really good. I love the emotional impact that you feel and I just really enjoyed it. I gave this I gave that book 4 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read was I finished volume 4 of Dengeki Daisy. Um, yeah, the story continued. I enjoyed it. There's nothing else to say about it. I gave that one um, 4 out of 5 stars. I mean, it was so pretty good. It's also reaching to the point where it's like, okay, you guys can reveal the secret to each other now so yeah let's 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 keep it moving the next book that I read was kill my mother by Jules Pfeiffer um yeah this book uh, is a graphic novel um okay so I have a lot to say about this book first off it was super confusing um I feel like I'm a good reader in the sense like I mean I feel like I can follow a story and you know know what's going on things like that this one was kind of confusing during some parts because some of the characters looked really similar it's in this really cool like scribble scrabble look to it which is I think is awesome like the way it's designed is really cool it's just like it's like almost doodling almost um, which is really awesome but I felt like the fault of that was that the main characters looked really similar and it'd be confu and it would be confusing at, during some parts where I didn't know who was who. Like the mom and the daughter got really confusing and then also it got kind of like monotonous at some points. I was just like, okay, we can get it started now. Um, yeah, I didn't, I wasn't that into it. Um, so... Yeah, I gave it 2 out of 5 stars. Uh, the next book that I read was part 1 of 2 of um, Boxers and Saints by uh, Jean Lung Yang. Uh, this is two books. Um, one part is basically about the Boxer Rebellion and then the second part is about other perspective that of the of the other side of the story. I'm gonna break it down for you. These books were okay. Middle of the road okay in my opinion. Like I wasn't ecstatic by them. I wasn't oh my god. I wasn't like it was bad. It was just okay. Like both of them were just okay. Like and I feel sometimes you ever feel like sometimes that's even worse than being bad. A book is just okay. Like, there's nothing you can give it praise for, but nothing you can knock it down for. And I felt like this book, this is exactly what these books did for me. Like, there was nothing. There's nothing I can say that was, like, you should go out, out of your way to read them, but there's nothing I should say, like, don't stop, stop from reading them. Um, so yeah, let me talk about Boxers. Boxers is basically about the Boxers, the Boxer Rebellion in China. Um, this part of the history, this part of world history I'm not that familiar with, so it's great that I got to read about it in this part, and low-key, this book was about, like, Chinese, 
Power Rangers. It was awesome. Um, it was so cool. And it was super violent. Oh, there was so many, like, blood and gore. It was awesome during that part. I just didn't connect with the character, like, the main character. I didn't connect with Bao, and I just felt like sometimes the jokes felt really flat. I mean, it tried... It has this... It tried to have this weird sense of humor, which it did, um, but then also some of the jokes were just like... Mm. It's been like, what, three weeks since I've read it, and I can tell you that I... Like... I'd be like, okay, so... The next one was Saints. Uh, it's basically the girl's perspective about this. What I did enjoy about this was that the... The color scheme change. It actually has this, like, weird or cool sepia tone to it. Um, compared to... Boxers, um, really colorful style. Uh, and again... Eh. This one for me fell flat. I thought it was okay. Like, it... <laughs> It was just literally okay, and I feel like that's just, that's even worse, ugh. But yeah, I mean this one, it was okay. So yeah, onward, let's keep it moving. Next, I read, I think one of my favorite series in, in anime, because I love the anime, but I just wanted to read the manga, and that's Oren High Host Club. I read the first volume. Oh my god, I love this series so much. Um, the first time I've ever watched it in the anime form, I was laughing so hard. That anime is so good! And the manga's even better! Uh, because the manga has more stuff in it compared to the anime. Uh, this story is about this girl named Haruhi who gets, who gets accepted into this elite, over-the-top <laughs> high school based on a scholarship. And then she accidentally ends up um, breaking a vase, and so she has to join the host club to repay it back, basically. What I love about this is it's generally a funny manga. Like, it is a funny anime, too, but it's really funny. Like, I feel, I feel like a lot of animes and a lot of... I'm gonna keep saying anime, but it's also in the mangas too. But I feel like a lot of animes, in their, in their attempt to be funny, um, they do this weird, like, weird thing. I don't know how to describe it, but if you watch a lot of animes, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, they try to be really quirky, uh, but sometimes to me it's just like, okay, you're being quirky, but it's not really funny, if that makes sense. Like, you're just quirky just to be quirky. But here, the jokes are, like, in your face, and it's just so funny. It's also really self-aware. It knows that it is over the top. Let me tell you, the manga is completely over the top, too. It's really everywhere. Like, it's just everywhere. I Would I recommend this to you if you're reading... If you're for a first time reading a manga, I'm gonna go with a no. While I think you should read it, I think that if you're reading this for the first time and you're a, you don't read that many mangas, I feel like it would kind of be overwhelming because like within a panel, there's a lot going on. I mean, there are like subtitles, the books get sometimes there's writings on the side, there's words everywhere, and there's a lot going on. Um, and I think it's amazing because it's really funny. I mean, they have a joke about. Instant coffee. So funny. God, it's so, so funny. Oh, it's hilarious. This manga, this series like, in general, is just completely aware how over the top everything is. Like, I mean, everything is completely over the top. I mean, they ha they build a beach in the school. What? So, yeah. Um, this also is a reverse of what I... I believe it's called a, um, a harem, a haram? I don't know, I've heard it pronounced two different ways. Which is basically, usually in haram, which I love, it's basically a, a, a guy who's usually really quiet and really reserved but has something really special about him. And for some odd reason, all the girls around him really love him so they fight each other. But here, it's actually Haruhi, Haruhi who's the, the guy 
but she's a girl and all the guys love her. I love each and every single one of these characters. They're amazing. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the the twin storyline, and the first time I encountered it, um, when I first watched the anime, it is uncomfortable because it is essentially twincess, which is twin plus incest, twincess. Um, at first it's really uncomfortable, but after a couple of episodes and more of the chapters, it's really funny. Like, it's... It's completely funny because they know how they're not they're not into each other, but it's just completely hilarious how these girls go crazy over that sense. Ugh. This is just a really good anime and manga and series. I highly recommend it. It is one of my favorite um, animes and series. I keep saying I keep switching animes and mangas, but you know what I mean. It's just amazing. I highly recommend it. And this series is on Netflix and Hulu. And if you watch it still, this they did this, I think, like in 2000-ish, around there. Um, this series still holds up. It's still great. And trust me, that theme song from, from the anime is really good. But the manga is so close to it. Um, I ha I'm excited to read more of the series. And I love, love, love it. So yeah, five stars out of five for sure. The next book that I read um, is The Sculptor by Scott McCloud. Um, it's this graphic novel about this guy who who's a sculptor and a sculptor who's a sculptor and he he's kind of like in a rut. He, he and so he, he can't exactly make anything, um, so he makes a deal with death, essentially, um, that he has this ability to sculpt anything out of anything, essentially. But that comes with a consequence, is that he will die soon. And I feel like I'm not spoiling anything, because that's, that's the back of it. But I really like this uh, graphic novel, and it has its faults, for sure. Um, it's in this cool, like, I wouldn't say black and white, it's like almost blue and black and white. It has this really cool shade um, that it portrays, which is really nice. And what I love about this was, I think it was kind of like how I feel with photography sometimes, is that you get in this position where it's, you just don't want to do it. Like, you just, you don't feel that passion to do something that you you're re usually passionate about and that's what happens here he gets in this position and he just doesn't feel like he's uh, wants to do it but then something happens and then he meets this girl and basically the story goes from there um i, ha I what i love to do is usually when i i i try to be completely um oblivious to a book so i don't want to read any reviews, etc. But after I read the book, I have my own opinion on it, so I watch other people's opinions on it. And this, a lot of people say that this book can get confusing, especially like, whoa, what is going on? But I actually enjoyed it. The ending, I love how this is one of those books where the ending, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but it's, it's light spoiler, um, how it comes back around and that I was like, oh, and oh my gosh, the ending to this book was so, so well. I loved it. It. They mentioned something in the beginning about death and and what happens when you die. And in the end, when it's actually happening, I was like, whoa, I kept flipping. It was like, I kept, I kept flipping the page and it was just so, so awesome. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Uh, but yeah, I gave this book three and a half out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. The next book that I read, okay, so this is where I'm going to talk about hype, okay? And whether it meets it or it doesn't. But the next book that I read was Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline uh, Woodson. Mm, 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 mm. Stop whatever you're doing if you haven't read it and read this book. Oh my gosh, it was so, so good. Like, really good. Oh my gosh, it was so good. This book, 
In case you don't know, it's um, an autobiography about Jacqueline Woodson when she was a kid growing up. And it's written in verse, which is <sighs> so good. Uh, but anyways, I first heard about this book when in booktube people were hauling it and it was getting a lot of hype. I mean like a lot of hype. It got nominated for a National Book Award and then that incident with Lemony Snicket. Mm, that's... Yeah, anyways. Um, you know, she was, she, was she was on the short list. I was like, okay. And then I, some of the people that I really do trust the reviews, because we tend to have the same taste in books, they were like, read it. So I was like, okay. And I read it. Oh my god. This is one of my favorite books of the year. It was so good. Oh my god. I, I love each and every chapter. I was reading it like, mm, yes, yes. And my favorite chapter is, well, my favorite poem, or chapter, I call it a chapter. My favorite, well, my favorite section, my favorite chapter was the penultimate episode, pe oh, episode, was the penultimate uh, chapter. Oh my gosh. And she was describing, when it was, mm, I'm the last for words. That's how good it was. I really enjoyed this book. It was so, first off, the writing was beautiful. I mean, the ch word choice was so good. Uh, and it told, it told a really good story. Like, I was really interested in her life. Cause, no lie, I think she was a Jehovah's Witness. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't want to get the uh, religion mixed up. Uh, because sometimes I do. And, yeah, I think she was a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, because she had to go to um, to the doors, yeah. And I'm not gonna lie, one time the Jehovah's Witness came to our door and me and my sister like locked it down, no shade. But yeah, uh, when she went, when she went to, um, I, God, I enjoyed that part so much because like it made me so, but so happy and I understood like why they did it. I was amazing. And then the, oh. Uh, Oh my god, I love the parts where she talks about food because I love food. And she was at her friend's house and they were eating Spanish rice and eating some, um, eating some, at, eating food at the vlog party and having music. I loved it. So good. <laughs> Read this book now. Five stars out of five. Next. Alright, the next book that I read was Unforgettable. Um, I thought it... It, it was weird because low-key, slick, like nothing happened, but at the same time, stuff did happen. Um, so, yeah. this um, The next book I read was This One Summer by Mariko Tamaki and Jillian Tamaki. Um, this book, first off, let's talk about the art. It's a graphic novel. It is beautiful. It has some amazing art in it. It's kind of like, instead of the black and white and blue it's like blue black and white like i mean purple yeah it was purple it was like a lavender almost it's purple uh <laughs> it was like a purple black and white tint thingy to it um it's basically about this girl who is about this girl named rose who goes to this um who goes to this cottage for the summer and meets her friend yeah that's it. Again, this book, like, there's nothing bad about it, but there's nothing I felt like was, <gasps> like, it was just, mm. I gave it two stars out of five. Um, yeah, keep it moving. Next. All right. The next group of books that I read were Fables, Volume 1, Legends in Exile, Volume 2, um, Animal Farm, Volume 3, uh, storybook love. Let me break it down for each and every single one of them because, Lord. Okay, so, Legends in Exile. Fables is, is just like a normal comic. It won the Eisner Award and, like, no shade or anything. I understood why the first one won it, but after that, I was just like, mm. So yeah, let's talk about each and every single one of them. Um, Legends in Exile. This series is about how like storybook fairy tale characters like Snow White, the Big Bad Wolf, Bluebeard, etc., etc., pushed out of fairy tale land essentially because of something, and now they live in like modern day 
New York. The main reason why I wanted to read this, in case you don't know, is because there's a video game for it, and I felt like I just wanted to read some of the books before I played a video game for it, because I love uh, it's Telltale's um, The Wolf Among Us, and I love, like, The Walking Dead. Oh my god. Woo! The Walking Dead is so good. You know, Game of Thrones, their Tales from Borderland, etc. So I wanted to read this before I you know, play that game. I think the first one, I think actually the first one is not that bad. It's, it has this mystery of where is Snow White's sister essentially and who committed this murder. I think the first one is really cool and I love getting introduced into the world and how things work which is really nice. The revel, the resolution on the ending, I was just like, oh okay. Like I enjoyed it but I wasn't like, <gasps> again it was okay and what I, I think what I really liked about it was that mystery portion. Like, I was like, hmm, who is the killer? And then when he does wrap it up, I was like, oh, because when you've turned back and look at the clues, it was actually there the whole time, which is really cool. I gave the first one, the Legends in Exile, uh, like three and a half out of five. I really enjoyed it. The next one was Animal Farm. Um, this one was okay. I gave this one three stars out of five. This one was about something happened in, because there's New York, right, where the main fables live, and then in the other part is the animal farm where, like, more of the lesser known creatures live, like, the, you know, the not, the not the rich ones. Um, and so, yeah, it was okay. It has some cool graphic scenes to it, like people getting shot and like stuff and whatnot. I was like, <gasps> so yeah, I thought I enjoyed it. And then when I reach storybook love, moment of silence because that's how I felt. I was just like, this one and um had several short stories come and then it had, yeah, this one has several short stories. And it was... Mm, I didn't enjoy this one as much as the other one. Um, and I don't know, to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to continue co with the series because I feel like it started off, you know, pretty okay, pretty good, and then pretty okay, pretty good, and then it's just dropping slowly but surely. And I've... Yeah, that one I gave 2 out of 5. Next! Next! <laughs>